who goes by they them in Iowa, who says that they used to believe in demons, but throughout deconversion came to believe they are weaknesses in the mind that can be eradicated by education, compassion, and reason. Hmm. So bringing D on, hey D, I, I mean I, I love your initial take on demons. Tell us what your what your thoughts are. Hey Sophia, nice to nice to finally get to speak with you. Yeah. Uh, hello again, Jamie. Hello again. Mm. And yeah, so in my very early twenties, um, I had a lot of very um, rare types of experiences, and one that stays with me. Um, that I was able to deconstruct on my own was it was fairly dramatic. Um, I had uh, contracted pneumonia and I was in the hospital and uh, it was in the middle of the night and my hospital room door opens and this little squat thing comes walking in um, definitely, I mean, definitely you look at it and you think demon. Okay. I'm like, oh my God, mm -hmm. there's a demon in my room. And it walks straight up to my bed and it wasn't, it wasn't even tall enough for the top of its head to reach the mattress, but it reached its hand up to me. And he said, if you take my hand, your suffering will stop basically. Um, come with me and everything will be okay. And instead of accepting, I was like, no, that was all I had the strength to say, but it was no, and it vanished. And, you know, after I'd recovered, I was out of the hospital and went to my doctor with a, for a, um, a checkup. And that was when my doctor told me that I was dying. I was, I, I, I was literally dying. The nurses were just waiting to call it. Um, so that shocked the hell out of me. And I started really thinking, you know, about the significance of this, um, this creature in my room. And as I thought about it and thought about it, I realized uh, are, are either of you um, familiar with Dungeons and Dragons? Well, I'm playing a game right now. I, I am. I'm married yeah. to a big aficionado and have also played my, a decent okay. amount. <laughs> okay, so do you know the, the cover of one of the handbooks? It has this demonic statue in it um, with flames. I bet you if you uh, go through your old books, you'll find it. Uh, I I can I know the types of artwork that are on the front covers. I can't re I can't think of the exact artwork you're mentioning, but I can imagine it. Mm -hmm. And I am not well, well versed enough uh, to have this Rolodex, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it was the spitting image of that cover. Um, and I also was an avid avid Dungeons and Dragons play, uh, player, and coupled with that uh, coupled with that experience and it's it's the old it's the first it's the first player's handbook cover oh right so that a little bit before yeah, my can. time i got i got in in, th in third edition so so D, &D yeah. original and a D, d are a little bit a bit old for me Oh my gosh, yeah. if you just it, type it in exactly first D&D &D player's that. handbook cover, it comes up right away, and I can totally see what you mean. It's a, yeah. it's a fat little dude mm -hmm. who's got the pointy teeth yeah. and the little ears. I totally see what you mean about that. Looks like a conception of a demon, for sure. Uh-huh. It was exactly, that was exactly the thing, except for the color was different. It was kind of a muddy brown. But, um... You know, with what my doctor told me and, you know, 
I, I realized at that moment it was not really a demon, that it was a figment of a mind that was under stress mm. and dying. And it, for some reason, if my mind was trying to comfort me, it came up with the worst possible thing it could. <laughs> I think maybe that it was an, I think that it was an in, innate um, attempt to hang on, if, if you mm. see what I mean. Mm. And so that well, is why, and unfortunately, I went through many, many, many more years in fundamentalist Christianity, but I, I never shook that feeling that demons are a figment of what's going on in your brain and your life, and that you need to try to be reasonable and search out people who are reasonable, not necessarily in your church. I, I turned to them less and less as time went on. Mm. But yeah, uh, compassion, reason, and education, that's, that's what we need. It it is, and that's what we promote here. And as I as I said in the cold open, like there are symptoms that we can easily identify as coming from certain maladies that that are often attributed to demonic possession and that kind of thing. One of the problems, though, is that we can be as compassionate and reasonable and evidence based as we what as we like. Getting that message across and having people accept it. I mean, that's why we do these shows. I mean, we can say these things until we're blue in the face, but until believers start actually accepting that these things are just imagination fueled sparked by their priming to believe in the supernatural we can't, we can't look, you can you can lead someone to the facts and the, and you can lead someone to the evidence but they are the ones that have to accept it you can't force someone to let go of these irrationalities right. we just have to hope that they that when people like yourself come on and give us examples of your own deconversion and your own rationale around these experiences that you had, there's someone out there's going, man, I had a very similar experience. Maybe I should start asking a few questions like D did. So thank you for calling in for that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and sorry, I didn't want to cut on you, cut, cut on your line there. No, but go ahead, go ahead. I I think about how you know, growing up in the church, and you probably experienced this too. I've heard similar stories that end with, and that's how I know God is real. A demon tried to tempt me with, you know, removing my pain, and that's such a classic kind of story. So I so appreciate that this story has a different ending that you looked at it and were like, I've seen that demon before, though. I was clearly, this was suggested to me, and that's Ooh. why I'm seeing that. Oh. We have a yeah. bit of a, an alarm going uh -oh. off. I don't know. I'm hearing that in the speaker. I, I don't, okay. I think Jamie's look, looking to see if there's <laughs> something, but, <laughs> but yeah, so I really appreciate that it's like, it actually made you more critical instead of less critical because it was this big emotional experience. Like, have you ever watched Bojack Horseman of all things? I, a, no, I haven't. Yeah. It's a cartoon on, I think Netflix and it's, it's, if you struggle with mental illness, I found a lot of uh, value in it because it, a lot, it's about a, a sad horse who used to be famous in the nineties, but there's an mm. episode where he is dying and he has quite a few uh, flashes into like different parts of his life. And so he at one point asks, is this, you know, do, is this the afterlife? Am I in heaven? Is this purgatory? What's going on? And one of the people that mm -hmm. he's seeing turns to him and just says, no, this is just what your brain doing what it does, you know, as you're dying. This is the, the pieces that are firing off. And I thought that was, you know, it can still be meaningful and it can still have meant something, but mm -hmm. it doesn't have to lead to uncritical belief in God. So I'm curious, why do you think that others take a different track? Because I know that, you know, you have a background of faith, I have a background in faith. So often people take this different storyline. Why do you think that might be? Mm -hmm. Well, I think for me, I was just beginning my fundamentalist journey. Um, I hadn't tipped full tilt into it yet. And while... 
I had I had imagery. Uh, I had a children's Bible. I had imagery of Jesus around me growing up. My parents were not religious. So I think that that's the main thing that, um, the, the main difference there, I think. Um, and, and I think that maybe, you know, people just handle trauma differently. Um, and, uh, yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, that that was basically my full thought. Yeah, I mean, from my perspective, it's ironic. I actually think that some people hold on to these beliefs because they find it more comfortable to believe that there are evil entities out there causing harm um, rather than face the fact that the world is just a natural place that can be cold and cruel and uncaring and unfair. Mm -hmm. Um, People Mm -hmm. would prefer to believe in a malevolent intelligence rather than what seems to be random. Um, it's one of the reasons I think people will forgive and hand wave the the character of God, dis- despite the fact that he's got a bit of a track record of doing horrific, horrific things in the Bible. Mm-hmm. They'd rather have mm-hmm. have a an all powerful despot than no guidance at all. And um, right. it's that it's that fear of the unknown and and being un- unable to control every aspect of life. Because if it's a demon, that means it's a thing. And if it's a thing, you can fight the thing. Mm-hmm. You know, it's 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 something you can yeah. you can actually combat. But um, I just think it's weirdly no, I was... as traumatic as it is, it's comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was. I, I, I'm a born skeptic. Um, you know, even some of the, you know, how watered down children's Bibles can be. Even some of the mm. things I read in my children's Bible, I was like, what? You know, and um, it uh, the, the fundamentalism was just a search, you know, uh, just a, a short uh, a, a short run on a short highway that I was looking for something. Uh, yeah, I, I think... didn't know it at the time, but I was dealing with P- PTSD, ADHD, um, bipolar disease. That all of that wasn't even d- diagnosed until years later. So I had a lot of stuff going on, and I was mm. found a community that I was comfortable in. But eventually, things happened, and my mindset changed, and, and I got out of it. Yeah, yeah I feel like uh, something that I particularly with with bipolar disorder that that illusions are part of that that actually being presented with uh evidence of paranoia somehow or being able to interpret things as evidence for things that are are not not really there i think people sort of forget that that's part of bipolar disorder a lot of the time but i feel like it's so I see how that yeah. it feels to me like the church takes advantage of that a lot of the time, right? They don't bother to learn about oh, yeah. what this could be. It's just that, oh, well, you know, obviously you saw a demon, it's a demon, you know, not maybe uh-huh. it's nothing's chasing you. Maybe you're having a medical <laughs> crisis, you know, <laughs> that's very different. It's right. interesting to me too, that we, <laughs> right. we, yeah, like we lean into these ideas of demons culturally during times when there's a lot of change. I am so not the first person to bring this up by any means, but you think about right. how much the world was changing in the 80s and how the satanic panic became this this big fear. At the same time, missing children mm-hmm. became a big fear. At the same time, the AIDS crisis was yeah. happening. It's just a lot is changing in the mm-hmm. world. So mm-hmm. let's let's just all well, focus on can... this one thing. Yeah. Well, if you can blame it on demons, you don't have any responsibility. Mm, yes. And I think I, that, I think that in in some ways that might be even more powerful than believing in a god. Believing in a demon means you can blame something else mm, for the bad yeah, things a, happening in your life rather than taking a, a, a good hard look and seeing if an there's interesting something thought, yeah. you can change. Mm-hmm. Yep. I, uh, I have- Sorry, I, oh yeah, and the, I mean, the amount of uh, get out of 
get out of responsibility free cards you get in religious doctrines uh, be it like a demon made me do it I was possessed by the devil I did it but I'm really sorry forgive me and now you are forgiven my son you know confessional and all that kind of thing uh-huh. um, it right. does you know it. you can once you step back and start looking at these structures and these stories and these dogma you go yeah this is just built so people can can control control people and um mm-hmm. justify the ills that they do um and and once you once you see it once you spot that you're like and it's everywhere like all of them are doing this it's 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 nuts and and so th- again that's why we kind of do what we do here it's like can't you see it's like that film they live we're trying to put the sunglasses on them and we're having that massive back alley fight with with rowdy roddy piper where it's like put put the glasses on (laughs) don't you see these really obvious bad red flags in the in in the things that not just in what you believe but what your beliefs are being used to do to you yeah yeah Yeah. i was uh at I have heard in person a religious man that I knew during his sentencing hearing for child rape say something about that he must have a demon inside him. And Mm. my brain glitched really hard because what the hell? And uh, my genuine thought is like, it's scarier to think you raped a child because you wanted to than it is to think that there's a demon in this person forcing them to do this bad thing it's scary to say that this is something humans can be driven to do and can choose to do to one another without any extraterrestrial Mm -hmm. interference that is horrifying i am horrified by that it doesn't make me feel better i realize to to not think it's a demon to not think the devil made him do it uh, it gives you this out to for all of humanity that that maybe if we just pray hard enough, just drive the demons out enough, mm-hmm. just send the the kids to you know hardcore fundamentalist church camps enough, just remove things like Dungeons and Dragons and heavy metal, and just take away all satanic influences. If we just suppress gangster rap, then the world will be better. Then people will do all of the naturally good things God wants them to do instead of the demonic things that they're doing instead. When I'm like, nah, Mm -hmm. this is not, it's us. It's just us. And dealing with that is harder and scarier, but at the same time, it's more real. It's the only way that it will matter. What we do is if we realize it is us choosing to do these evil things. So that was was a bit of a speech right there, but yeah. (laughs) And it's also, there is no divine justice. There is no punishment for this person after they're gone. They may have done the most heinous thing you can possibly imagine, but when they pop their clogs, the same as all of us, it's blackness. There's not going to be a a judge waiting for them on the other side. Yeah. And I do have anger, got to say, in my heart before that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You find it comforting. That's true. Okay, tell me about that, because for me, it's a very different reaction. So tell tell me about it being comforting. Um, that, uh, there's, there's no forgiveness, mm. basically. Yeah, it's the other side of the coin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he may not get no. punished, but you also can't ask for forgiveness either. Right. And yeah, maybe that's kind get... of a bad part of me. I don't, uh, you oh. know. It's not a bad part of you. I see <laughs> we're, some we're... things that some of my liberal friends are horrified that I support, but I mean, I'm, and, and I'm working on it. I'm, I'm open to being um, persuaded otherwise, but I mean, if, uh, if we can't, uh, if we can't do capital punishment, then at least we know he's not going to at least get any forgiveness out of it. I think and uh, really the only people true. that forgiveness belongs to would have been the the family of that little girl. Mm. They are really the only people that could legitimately extend it, and that's their decision whether they do or not. Um, oh yeah. 
Oh, no, I think that sometimes, you know, it's interesting because for me, I took a different perspective. I like yours because it does make me feel a little better. Um, but, that you know, he's going to still even in prison, he's going to be told by the other religious folks there that that's some kind of legitimate thing for him to to just to conceptualize this as that he will he'll receive forgiveness that that sin can be washed away mm -hmm. and that all sins are the same mm -hmm. and someone will smirk at them and say, no one is righteous. No, not one, uh, which has been told to me so often by Christians, right. even when I bring up something heinous oh, yeah. like child rape, right? At verse, man. Mm -hmm. Yikes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And well, so I had I mean, I anger think if, for that. If there is, yeah, I think that if there is, any cosmic justice at all in the universe, he may be granted just enough time to realize that it's all a lie. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, like, nope. no matter what happens to him, like we said, that girl cannot be unraped. And that brings us on to the whole oeuvre of, of, like, divine punishment and divine justice being wrong in its inception. Mm -hmm. Like, God doesn't intercede in that horrific thing. It's part of the plan. But he'll get his just desserts in the afterlife, don't you Don't you know? And I'm like, that is not justice. That's yeah. not fair. Yeah. So, yeah, um, yet another aspect of, of religious maybe, dogma that I can't get on board with. And, and you know, their favorite, their favorite argument is free will. Well, what about that little girl's free will? Mm. You know, don't talk about free will that not a thing i'm gonna get like, like this there's rants i could go on about that there's a there's a there's a, the uh, rant. Was, i love an angry rant gotta yeah say there's a there's an exhibit um in a museum i can't remember exactly where it was but it's an exhibit of the clothes that were worn by sexual assault victims um in uh and it's the whole like well she was asking for it she was seven and wearing dungarees. Oh man! Was she asking for it? Oh, How man. was she asking for it? Um, and, and oh, it, it boils my blood. I've been a stepdad. I've been in charge of kids. I, 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 I have had that protective kind of thing. And just the, the just the idea of someone. Uh, it, 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 yeah, I can't really put it into mm. words. I can only just put yeah. it into like an angry sounds, basically. <laughs> And to have it justified, Absolutely. oh, it's yeah, a demon. There are no words, are there? No, no, no. No. Um, no. Okay, I can see how. I think uh, with I some got folks. Your, I got your demonic, I got your demonic exorcism right here. Sit down in this chair. <laughs> <laughs> you in, so. D will exercise you. <laughs> I love <Yeah>. it. <laughs> All right. Well, we, we've kept anyway, you on for a while. That's all I needed to share. Yeah. yeah, I appreciate that a lot. Um, thank you so much for calling. It was really nice to be able to chat with you. I've I've heard you on the show before, yeah. and I just appreciate your your presence in in many ways. And yeah, thanks for being here to have this heavy conversation with us too. Yeah.